If you remember, a few weeks ago I've made a video about types of displays that you could use in your project. Well, I would like to do the same but with sensors, that you could use with Arduino or other microcontrollers. Obviously, there are a lot of sensors, and I can't get them all, but I would like to show you the sensors that I have around my workshop, show you an example code for each and talk about the use of each of these sensors. We have a lot of sensors, and some of these have a digital output or an analog output, or some sort of I2C or SPA communication. This will be another basic video, but in this way you could make an idea of what projects you could start with an Arduino and some sensors. I hope this will help beginners, or for those who are not beginners, well, see some more sensors that we have on the market. Before we start, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also, thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, that offers the most economic prices for PCB services, right now with only $2 for 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 cm. The finish of their PCB is very professional and high quality. So just upload the Gerber files to glcpcb.com, select the thickness, the size, the quantity and so on, and place your order for amazing prices. What's up my friends, welcome back. So I have a bunch of sensors here on my table a breadboard, my oscilloscope and an Arduino for tests. I won't go with each Arduino code step by step, but I'm sharing below the schematic for each example and the code with comments for each line, so make sure you read that before uploading the code. So what could be a sensor? I mean even a push button could sense something. It could detect if I push the button or not, that's pretty obvious. But we don't usually refer to a push button as a sensor, more as a detector. So a detector is the result after the sensor process to say if something is or is not. For example, this entire module is a so-called movement detector. If it detects movement, it gives a high output. If we don't have movement, the output is low. So we couldn't call this a sensor. But inside this module we have a PIR sensor, or a passive infrared radiation sensor. This will sense the amount of infrared radiation, and give that amount to an integrated chip, this one here and that will calculate the difference and say if there was movement or not. So the detection process needs a sensor, a device or a module that could sense the events or changes from the environment and then send that information. So let's just make the difference between the sensor and the detector. The sensor is the device itself that gives information or data according to the surroundings or situation. And the detector will be a device, so let's say an Arduino for example, that will give the detection output. I've tried to separate my sensor in three packs. Here I have those who are light related sensors. Then I have the magnetic, the pressure, the gyro and acceleration sensors. And this final group, well, is just general sensor with all kind of purposes. Let's start with this pack here. First we have a color sensor that is based on the TCS3200 chip with photodiase filters for red, green and blue colors. This module will apply white light and sense the response frequency of each color that is reflected. Of course, a red object will absorb all the colors but the red one, and so on. So you should run this example that will print the response for each color and place a red, green and blue color in front of the sensor and note down the ranges of each color so you could then detect the colors. For example, here I place the blue side of this ruby cube and I can see that the blue response is getting lower. Note down the values for each color. You have the schematic, an example code and the full tutorial about this below. Ok guys, next we have this hard pole sensor. It combines a simple optical heart rate sensor with an amplification and noise cancellation circuit, making this fast and easy to get reliable pulse readings. You will also need to install processing for this example. Make the connections and upload the Arduino code to the Arduino. Then run the processing and get the serial data from the Arduino and we could print the hard pulses to the screen. This is pretty nice, right? Ok guys, next we have the PIR sensor, or a passive infrared radiation sensor. It detects radiation changes, and since our bodies radiate heat in the form of infrared radiation, we can detect movement by detecting these changes in the infrared radiation. So make the connections to the Arduino and run the example code. The sensor will give the high output each time it detects movement. 
In this example, I turn on this LED each time that I detect movement, as you can see here. I move my hand and I turn on the LED. This sensor could be used in so many applications, where you could turn on lights, set an alarm activated by movement and so on. Ok, the next light based sensor is this infrared distance sensor. As you can see, infrared light is used very often. That is because we are usually already surrounded by visible light, and that will result in a lot of noise. Ok, this module will send an infrared beam. Then it detects the bounced beam of light and depending on where the light touches the sensor, it can detect the bounced angle and by that the distance to the object. These sensors can be quite accurate. I have one that goes from 15 cm up to 1 meter and another one that goes from 1 cm to 10 cm. It will give an analog output according to the distance. Here I have it connected to my oscilloscope and as you can see, by moving an object in front of this sensor, the output value will change. I've used this kind of sensor in my 3D scanner project, since it has some decent precision when measuring small distances. Connect it to an Arduino and upload the example code, and you could print the distance to the serial monitor or to the LCD screen. You will need the distance to voltage graph in order to know how to map the distance in the Arduino code. Read the code for more. Ok, I also have this laser based distance sensor, with the VL53L0 chip. This is one of the smallest packages on the market, for a laser based distance sensor. As you can see it is very small, so you could place this one on any kind of PCBs and detect the distances or gestures. It uses a night square c communication to send the data, and it could measure up to 2 meters in perfect conditions. It measures the distance by detecting the reflected laser beam. Connect it to the Arduino. Install the needed library that you could also find below and run the code that will print the distance in millimeters to the serial monitor or to the LCD screen if you have one. This module has a very good precision for distance, so have this chip in mind when preparing your projects. It is also quite cheap, just a few dollars. Another light based sensor is this direct infrared sensor. This module has an infrared LED that will send an infrared light. Then we have the phototransistor that will detect the light it reflects on an object in front of it. This kind of sensor could also be used as a switch, as these small modules do, where the emitter and the receiver are one in front of each other, and could detect when something is in between them. I've used this sensor in a lot of projects, such as the encoded DC motor to count the steps, or the infrared remote to send and receive data using infrared light. As you can see on my oscilloscope, more infrared light we get, the higher will be the output. Or if we have the module into digital mode, it will switch to high when we are close enough to the sensor. This module has an amplifier, and by setting the threshold with this potentiometer, we could detect stuff. For example, fire emits a lot of infrared light, so we could sense fire if we want. Download the example code and upload it to the Arduino, and you could print the analog output to the serial monitor or to the LCD screen, and then you could activate stuff, for example turn on an LED when we detect fire. Finally, the last light based sensor is this LDR, or light dependent resistor. This resistor will change its value according to the amount of light that it receives. So if I create a voltage divider and apply 5 volts to it, we could measure the voltage drop and see how it changes according to the light. We can connect this to an Arduino and detect the visible light and maybe create a light falling robot or any other idea that you have. You have the schematic and a simple example code below together with the full tutorial on my webpage electronoops.com. Ok guys, now we have this other group. Here I have an IMU module and a magnetometer. We've seen this IMU module in a lot of past tutorials. This is the MPU6050 and I also have the MPU9265 module. It can sense gyro forces and accelerations. With these values we could calculate the angle as well. Below this video you have a few examples. This module uses an ice c communication to send the data to the microcontroller. So connect it to the Arduino, and you could for example print the orientation angle to the serial monitor or to the LCD screen. You could also print the raw values of accelerations or gyro data. You could use this sensor with drones that must fly horizontal. Also you could detect accidents, by sensing the accelerations, and when the peak is detected, well that must be a fast change of acceleration, so it might be an accident. 
you could also detect if something moved. If you detect gyro or acceleration changes, that means that the object on which the module is placed moved. This is a very interesting module. Ok guys, I also have this magnetometer. This module is the HMC5883 and it uses an accuracy communication to send the data. This measures the earth magnetic field, so we could create a compass and detect where is north and by that orient us in space. This could also be used with drones, together with a GPS module so we could know the location of the drone. You could also use this to make measurements of the earth magnetic field. Connect the I2C pins as in the schematic below and upload the example code that will print the magnetic values and that's it. Ok guys, now I have this atmospheric pressure sensor. It will measure the pressure, so with that we could get the altitude. The higher in the air we are, the lower will be the pressure, since we have less air above us, pushing us downwards. The module has an I2C communication as well, so connect that to the Arduino and then install the needed libraries that you could also find below. Run the code that will print the pressure and the approximated altitude. You could use this module for a weather station project or for a drone, so you could implement the altitude hold configuration for that drone. Check more details in the link below. Ok guys, we finally have the last group of sensors which are quite general. Let's start with this gas sensor. Now depending on the type of sensor you could detect specific types of gases, as for example inflammable gases, air quality or alcohol detection in the air that you exhale. But in this case, this sensor will detect the changes in the normal air percentage of gases. It uses an amplifier, it could have an analog signal as well or directly the detection signal which could be high or low, meaning that the normal values of air are not right or that the air is clean. Connect this module to the Arduino and upload the code. It will print the analog grid from the sensor and by setting the threshold values, you could detect the air quality changes or any other gas by using a specific gas sensor. As you can see, when I release gas from this lighter, the analog output increases and that means that we have a gas leak. Ok, the next example is the common distance sensor using ultrasound pulses. It sends a sound wave, detects the bounced wave and it calculates the time it took the sound to get back and by knowing the speed of sound, we can get the distance to the object in front of the sensor. I've made a full tutorial on how to make a sensor like this one, so check that video for more details. Connect the module and upload the code and it will print the distance in centimeter onto the serial monitor or to the LCD screen if you have one. Read more about this on my webpage and read the lines in the example code for more. Ok, now I have a thermocouple voltage sensor. The thermocouple is a component that will create a small voltage drop on its connectors when it's heated up. By knowing the temperature versus the voltage drop relation, we can measure temperatures. Since the voltage drop is very very small, we need this kind of sensor that uses the MAC6675 amplifier. So connect a K-type thermocouple to this module and make the connections to the Arduino. Then upload the code and run it and it will print the temperature. As you can see, I heat up the thermocouple and I get the real value of the temperature. This kind of component is very useful when working with high temperatures, since it would withstand up to 700 degrees. Ok now, in the same way, I have this thermistor, which is a temperature dependent resistor. As in the example with the light dependent resistor, we could create a voltage divider and we will see that the output voltage will vary depending on the temperature. If we know the thermistor response, we can measure the temperature with the Arduino. As you can see, when I heat up the thermistor, the resistance will change and as you can see on the oscilloscope, the voltage divider output will change as well. More information below. Ok, I also have this current sensor. This module uses the MAX471 current sensor. Connect this module in parallel with the load and it will measure the current that the load uses. I make the connections and I add a resistor as a load and I use this power controller to vary the applied voltage from the battery. After I upload an example code, it will print the current values and as you can see I increase the voltage and the current increases as well and that gets printed onto the screen. This is another very useful sensor for your projects. Now here we have a whole sensor. This small component could detect magnetic fields. 
I've used this kind of sensor for my POV clock project and for the censored electronic speed controller. This is the 49E Hall sensor and this one has a linear output. If I make the connections to 5V and ground, as you can see when I place a magnet close to this module, the output will increase or decrease. I could connect this analog output to an Arduino and by that detect magnetic fields. You could use this as a switch or an encoder on a motor shaft or any other idea that you have. Once you know how to measure the output, you could use this for any project. It is very easy to use. You also have the digital type where the output is high or low and that means that the magnet is close to the component or not. Ok, so finally I have an ADC. Now you could say that this is not a sensor, but technically it sends the analog value. You could use the ADC of the Arduino, but that is only a 10 bit converter. For more precision I have this 16 bits ADC. This will give me 65,000 points for a range from 0 to 5 volts. That is a resolution of only 75 micro volts. It uses a nice crazy communication as well and it has 4 different analog inputs. This is a great module if you want precision. I make the connections and now, as you can see it prints the analog value from this potentiometer to the screen or to the serial monitor with very high precision. So have this module in mind when you want good precision for your analog reads. So that's it my friends, these are more or less the sensor that I have right now laying around my workshop. There are much more on the market. So I hope that this video helped you to make an idea of the amount of sensors and how to use each one of them. Consider supporting my projects on Patreon. If you like this video make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.